So we'll soon, um, at the end of the year, be launching a client product called Meteorlake. And that product will bring with it um, AI in the client. So it will enable you to deliver, uh, to develop and deliver workloads that work in the data center or work in the client. And you can optimize where to run them uh, based on you know, the particular logic that you want to run away, you want to run that. So we're really excited about bringing AI end to end. And we're doing it with open standards, meaning that many hardware vendors can play, software vendors can play. We are welcoming today Steve Shakespeare, lead the EMEA uh, Enterprise and Public Sales Team. How are you today? Great, great to be here. Thank you, thank you so much for being with us. Let's start with first question. In the late, uh, in the late events, Intel focused a lot on chips that power on devices AI models. What are your plans in AI data centers? And we, since we are in Jitex, let's speak about AI more for data centers and much more AI in the future, everything. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on with AI. I, I, and I think over the course of this year, we've seen an accelerated interest in AI, generative AI and beyond. Um, we're excited about the products that we have brought to market and we're continuing to bring to market on AI. So in the, in the data center, uh, we most recently launched our fourth generation uh, Xeon family of products. And in those, we, we put a number of built-in acceleration technology, making them a great choice uh, for uh, general purpose AI uh, training and uh, inference platform. So we're building that within our Xeon fourth generation products. You know, so much so that we've accelerated some uh, AI workloads by more than 14% generation on generation. So significant uplift that we've had, so 14 times generation on generation. So we're excited about what we've done there. But in addition to that, uh, we've introduced um, uh, uh, products that enable large language models. So we have a product called Gaudi 2, and Gaudi 2 is a large language model uh, training and inference platform. Uh, so we're excited that we pulled that to market and we're getting early adoption, uh, such as a company called Silicon AI, that are starting to bring that to market. So that is now a platform that is bringing choice to the market about how they can deploy AI workloads into the data center. Um, and then furthermore, beyond that, we've got a big focus on how we, we create open standards for AI and how we enable the market to innovate in AI um, in that, on that basis, both from the cloud, in the data center, and to the edge. Um, so we'll soon, um, at the end of the year, be launching a client product called Meteorlake. And that product will bring with it um, AI in the client. So it will enable you to deliver, uh, to develop and deliver workloads that work in the data center or work in the client. And you can optimize where to run them uh, based on you know, the particular logic that you want to run away, you want to run that. So we're really excited about bringing AI end to end. And we're doing it with open standards, meaning that many hardware vendors can play, software vendors can play. Um, and we've built open standard platforms such as One API, which is uh, an application program interface, meaning you can write your code once and it will run across these platforms and it will run not only on Intel platforms, but it will run on other OEM vendor platforms as well, creating an open standard uh, so that uh, developers can build in the knowledge that their, their, uh, their AI solutions can run across the environment. Okay, great. Um, let's, because we are speaking about AI, there is a lot of, let's say, challenges, not only for AI, in general in this region. So I want to ask you, what are the unique challenges uh, that does the region pose to Intel's business? Well, I, I, I think what I really see it as more as an opportunity than a challenge. I, I think what I'm certainly seeing here in the region is an enormous uh, appetite to invest and to develop and take advantage of AI. There are so many examples from um, both in the government uh, investments and how governments want to build that as well as commercial investments as well. So we're seeing a tremendous appetite to accelerate AI. Obviously, there's the development of large language models uh, here in the region that have been done uh, to, to support AI. I know that some, um, you know, some government departments are looking to have you know, confidentially secure AI environments that they can develop. So we see a number of opportunities. So we're responding to that. As I mentioned, we've got open standards based AI platforms that work from the data center to the edge. But in addition, we're bringing secure platforms that can give confidence around that. So for example, for, um, for data center computing, we have a, a technology uh, that enables a solution called confidential computing. And what this enables is secure, highly secure, containerized um, uh, uh, environments so that you can run your AI workloads in a secure cloud or in a secure enclave that cannot be uh, 
uh, breached by any other workload. So if you're looking for highly secure information, we can enable that with our confidential computing platform. And that comes with our latest generation uh, Xeon fourth generation server platforms as well. So, so we're responding to the security needs of the environment. Um, the other thing that we're seeing is a big focus on sustainability, right? Clearly, you know, one of the big focuses we see this here at Gitex is how do we enable sustainability? Um, so by bringing uh, acceleration technology into our processes, uh, what we're enabling is optimization of, of workloads to reduce the energy consumption and actually do develop um, improvements uh, in that as well. Um, so kind of a good, good example there. And, and actually, if you, um, if you visit the, uh, the Eti Salat stand, you'll see yeah. some examples of where, we, where we've worked together to build sustainable environments uh, for the cloud to edge where our technology is reducing the, uh, the carbon emission of the network infrastructure and the data center infrastructure. And we've also, also got examples of where we're doing that with AI workloads as well. So we're responding to the sustainability demands that we're seeing for the region whilst also bringing technology innovation and open standards. Okay, that's awesome. That's why I want to ask you about Jitex. You maybe answer the half of the question. What you are showing in Jitex this year and what the plans do you have for Middle East? Well, um, yeah, so, so we're here with many of our partners. In fact, if you walk around the environment, you'll see you know, with many of the, the, uh, the OEM hardware manufacturers who we've worked with, of course, for many, many years, you'll see where they're talking about uh, cloud solutions that enable sustainability uh, and AI and secure solutions. You'll see client solutions that are doing the same. You know, so whether it's with um, HP or Lenovo or Dell, you'll see those solutions in place. As I mentioned, we're doing, uh, we're doing work in the, uh, the networking environment. Uh, so a lot of work with Etisalat where we've, we've got uh, agreements in place with them to enable them to take advantage of our, of, of our technology from the cloud to the edge. Um, you'll see that we're here with uh, Cisco uh, and um, we're also here with Ericsson. So we spend a lot of time investing in, uh, in the network infrastructure. You know, one of the things I think in this region in particular is this region is at the forefront of communications technology, you know, the fastest adopter of 5G technology. Um, and Intel's worked closely with, uh, with Ericsson and, and Nokia and other infrastructure providers uh, to really help accelerate the availability of 5G network technology and VRAN, virtual radio access network technology, so that uh, so networks can run on open standards and take advantage of not only the technology that we have, but also the, the energy efficient technology. We've got some interesting uh, software solutions that we have in place as well that enable the software, the, enable the energy consumption optimization. So um, infrastructure power manager is a solution that we have. And what that does it works with the uh, the power states in the silicon and it enables the um, the network to be uh, optimized such that it's using the minimum amount of power to deliver the maximum amount of throughput and right. this obviously addresses again the sustainability concerns whilst also supporting the uh, the massive appetite that we see for communications uh, across the region okay great this question popped in my mind when when you were speaking about uh, the announcement in Jitex. Why Intel this year announced the Intel Refresh, Raptor Lake Refresh, not the new one that's like rumored to be announced, <coughs> the new one? Well, so that's a great question. So we've got, um, we've got a big focus on accelerating our technology innovation with our silicon products. Uh, so uh, we've had a, uh, a focus led by our, our new-ish CEO, Pat Gelsinger, a uh, whole principle of five nodes in four years. So what we're doing is we're introducing newer and newer technology nodes in our manufacturing process. Um, so we've launched um, uh, Intel 7, uh, that's in market, uh, with the um, announcement of uh, Meteor Lake, which will be coming in Q4, that will run on Intel 4. Uh, we decided to do a refresh of Raptor Lake, which is on uh, Intel 7. So we, we refreshed that in this cycle. Okay. But we're just responding to the market and that, that's got a gaming emphasis. So we wanted to give the best performance we could out of that platform before we bring Meteor Lake, which will come at the end of this year. And then we move on to uh, Intel 3, which is our next generation node. So we've announced uh, an energy efficient core platform uh, called Sierra Forest. So that will have 288 cores in the data center. That's going to come in the first half of next year, uh, and that's on Intel 3. Uh, and then we've shown uh, silicon uh, examples of Intel 20A and Intel 18A. So over the, over the course of five years, 
we've accelerated through silicon technology. And this is really about getting Intel to the forefront of technology leadership in terms of the silicon platform we're doing. So we're very excited about how that technology enables us to bring ever more capable compute platforms, higher performance with lower energy consumption. So responding to the demands of the region and responding to the sustainability uh, requirements the region's looking for as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for asking my question because I was a little bit curious yeah. knowing that this particular thing. Yeah. And um, thank you so much for your time. And it was, was everything you still. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Great Thanks. to see you. Right. Thanks for your time. Thank you.